afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Toad TV. I am Mary Beth. I'm Helen. We are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow. And today is Tuesday, April 2nd. It is April. Who knew? Well, hopefully everybody knows. But anyway, it's April. Um, it's raining. Again. Because, you know, we're having a wet spring. I'm having a wet 2024. Yeah. Helen put up a video over the weekend of the flowers that are coming up. They're coming up beautifully. Um, the daffodils are just blooming their heads off. And um, we have tulips that are about ready to pop. I mean, when I say they're about ready to pop, they have the bulb that's this yeah, big round and, and, thing. And, and just it's just slowly opening. Waiting to open up. And the hyacinths are starting to peak up. So. Yep. We're, we're starting to see which ones, you know, which colors are coming. Um, Speaking of hyacinths, we were down in the dark and drafty basement. Dungeon. A dungeon, dungeon of the, the castle. castle and god knows how long ago our mother put down into the basement some hyacinths that she had bought gotten from the supermarket or whatever they still had their foil wrap on the the planter um in the dark and drafty basement it's april those hyacinths are growing they had like this much of a green stalk on them so we've put them back outside in the sun to yep. see what happens I love Mother Nature. I it's time to grow. I'm going to grow. It's good. I'm coming. Yeah. That's what I do. This is my job. I'm yeah. supposed to come up. So they are now outside, um, up on a table, so that certain creatures who like to replant cannot reach them. And by replant, we mean, you know, dig giant holes in the yard and then just walk away. <laughs> they did their part. So surprise, surprise. Um, we have another digger. Ivy is a digger. She loves to go digging. She hasn't gotten to the really, really deep part of the holes, except that one in the front. Yeah, but that um, she gets help with. It, and so I, and I'm started. pretty sure there's there's there are voles or mice or bees or something down there that he's trying to get to. China, I don't know. Who knows? Um, However, they are, um, they're both, they come in with these muddy, muddy paws. Yeah. Rain, white dogs. And mud. And mud. Good combination. It is. However, it's dirt. It dries. It vacuums up. Right. And she's got short, wiry hair. She's got short, wiry hair that you let the dirt dry and it just yeah. flakes right off. It's oh, yeah. a piece of cake. Um, Ivy went to the vet for the first time yesterday. She got to meet Lisa, our uh, Lisa Confessori, our vet. And um, she pretty much charmed her way all the way through that <laughs> facility. Um she just made friends with everybody, including the vet tech, who um, he just picked her up and loved on her. She um, she had to go by herself. She did. And uh, Hugo did not like her leaving. He just sat by the gate. It was so sad. Really? They're such good pals. Yeah. Um, so, yes, she went to the vet. She is perfectly healthy. She is 29.4 pounds. And... Um, did Lisa say whether she's going to get much bigger? I didn't ask. Okay. I figure this is all going to be an adventure. Yes. And we're going to find out together. But I am sure that Helen is going to have either at the front or the back of this um, podcast pictures and stuff of Ivy. <laughs> yes, I have pictures of the two of them watching TV together on the Ottoman. Um, I have videos of them playing out in the yard at night doing their wrestling um so yes you you will Prepare. get pl plenty of hugo and ivy spam for the, I was for the next say, little bit you're gonna get hugo and ivy together um but that's okay because that's where our focus is right and it is just a good place to be as far as i'm concerned she's she's still she's adjusting still because she's still a little skittish around humans and for me in particular when i'm standing and walking towards her because i'm taller and Mary Beth, she did. She still kind of runs away from me. She's getting better. Yeah. Um, but if I'm sitting, like I mean, yesterday she just jumped in the chair with me, um, and she sits at my feet. She's asleep at our feet right now. Right. Um, Very she, often, you know, you'll be doing something, and all of a sudden you'll feel this poke at the back of like your calf. Right. Because that's where she hits, and she's just nudging you. Just to let you, you know she's there, and she's checking you out, and it's like, okay, you're good. But she follows Mary Beth all over the place. It's so sweet. She does. She she's she's my shadow. I love her so much. Um, so perfect addition to the family. Yes. 
Um, okay, so quick admin stuff. We are in April. Every April's club yarns have gone out. Right. So all of them have gone out. If you haven't gotten them yet, they're coming. So those are all dyed and gone. March's clubs are now available online for you to purchase. Um, we're going to show you what they are so that the people who don't like the mystery that like to see what they're getting first, you guys can take a look at them and decide if you would like some. Right. And if you would, let us know because um, then we'll dye them up for you and send them out. Excuse me. Hiccup. Okay. So anyway, here are your uh, March yarns. Okay. Start with uh, Disney. Okay. Here we I'll go. Put up the. This was the movie we uh, took inspiration from, and here comes your yarn. So we have not seen this movie. We have to um, check it out because right. it looks like it's fun. Helen has to hold this one up because it kind of. We have washes. to keep it away from Mary Beth's sweatshirt because it distorts the color. If I had thought Speaking ahead of, of time. Short wiry hair. <laughs> I would have worn a different color. So it's a ready orangey color with brown overtones. Very cool. Yeah, it's a really pretty color. Yeah, and it works really well for the inspiration. Yeah. So that's okay. turning red. Favorite books collection is here. So those of you that have been around for any amount of time know that Aaron Morgenstern wrote one of our favorite books of all time. Um, we are both huge, huge fans of The Night Circus. We did not enjoy The Starless Sea quite as much as The Night Circus, but we have it as an audible and we both want to listen to it right. and see, because sometimes listening to it, it changes your viewpoint of the book. Um, also, I think um, expectations are, have now been tampered on it. Right. When it first came out, it had been eight or nine years since the night circus and it was just you just wanted it to be another night circus right. and it was totally different and that you know she can write something other than the night circus she's which is really she's good. allowed it's it's, um, it's good that it's not the night circus right so, but it was so it was just i mean i think i plowed through it a little bit looking yes. for the bits that would gonna were going to grab me like the night circus and i didn't get that um so I did the book a disservice by expecting way too much from it. So we both want to listen to it. Right. Anyway. Also, she should be coming out with a new book soon. It's, I mean, it's about let's the get to, time. Okay, let's get to the important stuff. Here's the yarn. <laughs> this is the yarn for the Starless Sea. And this is just, I mean, it's golds and blues. And it's just gorgeous. I love this yarn. Okay. And then our Denizens of the Hollow is this inspiration. Very appropriate for the time of year. This is Bunny Deliveries. And oh my gosh. This, this is one, one of my favorite colors we've ever dyed. Oh, this is so good. So there's some blues, some oranges, some greens, some browns, some golds. It's just stunning. So gorgeous. Yeah. This is a and warm, it's, it's a good comfy. variegated, just it's all they're all blending together. So. Yeah, you know how you read cozy mysteries or cozy fantasy or cozy whatever your cozy books. This is cozy yarn right here. This is just a warm cozy hug yeah. of a yarn. So here we go. Those are the March clubs that are now open in the shop, available, and they're pre-orders. We will dye them and send them out to you. Right. Okay. So that's March. April's is gone. May's are going to go on sale starting April 18th in May. and around April. No, you're right. Sorry. In and around April 18th, we'll give you a week to purchase them if you want them as a mystery. And then um, we will dye them the last week in April and send them out to you beginning of May. Right. Okay. That's the clubs. Okay. So that does that. Okay, and um, we wanted to say that we know that a lot of yarn dyers are putting out their advent calendars this week um, for 2024, and we will be having an advent calendar, um, so stay tuned. Yes. We just haven't gotten all the all this particulars in place yet. 
uh, to be able to really to be ready to be release it the way we want to. Right. So, but, but it is coming. it is coming. So save a spot for our advent calendar. Right. We didn't do it last year, but in 2022 we did it, and we're going to do it the same way where we have. Um, the option to just get the yarn, you can get the yarn and the bag, you can get the yarn, the bag, and a book sleeve, or you can get the yarn and the book sleeve. All different things for you to choose. Right. But there will be a bag available to go with it and a book sleeve for your December books. 20 gram minis and uh, you'll be able to pick fingering or DK. Okay. All right. So the only thing that we have yet to tell you is when to buy it and the theme. That will be coming. That will be coming soon. Okay. Um, oh, on our Friday podcast, we had a question whether we would be doing another Hugo Hugo's Choice uh, yarn for April. And we are not. We're going to be doing those every other month. So we'll pick another animal shelter and um, plan. But that won't be coming till May. In April, what we're doing is we are delving into the vaults and bringing back one of our older yarns. Right. So we are going to get it and we're going to re-dye it tomorrow. We don't know how it's going to turn out using the new dyeing really, method yeah, that the, we're doing. The one we chose is a really, really old one. This is my original dye book where I would write down my ideas um we were reading through them and it's just it's so funny so well I mean here what was one of them that you were doing where it was um it had like you do pink in the middle and then you do green going around the outside and I mean just the Let's see here. I even drew a little diagram for where to put the water, the the color. It's just. I have some of them where it you soak the yarn and then you spritz them with a color, and then you took it out and poured out all the water, turned it over, spritzed them again. And I mean, it was just some of my uh, measurements too are just here: one tablespoon, three cups, hyphen one and a half cups. Not even sure what that's supposed to mean. Right. Other than that, one and a half cups is half of three cups. Okay, so this one: mist with turquoise on side one, mist with poinsettia on side two. Take a syringe of blazing orange and swath it across side one. <laughs> Drops of flamingo on side one, speckle, sunshine yellow, emerald green, midnight blue, electric purple, and valentine blush on side one. Then on side two, you do drops of yellow, purple, and turquoise, speckle of green, pink, and yellow, spritz with citric acid mixed with water, and let set for at least one hour. Then you put in large pots to set. So after eight hours of work, you get four seconds of yarn. <laughs> I mean, really, as some of these Whereas our production just... is now down to, after an hour and a half of yarn, we have 88 skeins of yarn. Um, the thing was, you know, we were doing one skein. So when you're doing one skein right. in the middle of a great big pan, it's a piece of cake. When you're doing, you know, 40 of the same color, it's a little bit more difficult. But we are going back through our archives and looking at... Um, some of the things that we did and we're going to start bringing back some of them, but they're not going to, if you have the originals, they may not look the same. Right. Just because they will not look the same. Completely different way. I mean, especially for the, the one that we're bringing back for April, it's, um, we're taking the colors. We're not, even, we're not even taking the, um, the, the measurements. The, we're, oh yeah. yeah. No, no it's we're, just, we're changing um, lots and lots of stuff about it, but we're, it's going to be 2.0. Just because it, the measurements make no sense. Yeah. I mean, this is the first skein I ever dyed. Overthink things much? Mm. Well, we had no idea. I know. So we were just, I mean, playing around with things. Ha! Ah, so. 
new colors yes. coming next week. Um, actually, Friday. I think we're going to have them to show on Friday. They were dying and tomorrow, so they should be ready to show on they Friday. They should be ready if, to dry. If it works out. Right. Friday may be, yeah, that, that was hideous. We should have listened to the book. Yeah. <laughs> Check in Friday to see how it turns out. Okay, so Helen has some knitting and crocheting to show you and talk about. I have a project that has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with yarn. Um, I am still working on my Mount Juliet shawl, and it is coming along, but I hope to be able to show you a finished product on Friday. So I'm going to hold off and wait till then. Um, but we're going to show you those, and then we're going to do a wrap-up of books. Right. Because we finished, it's April, so we finished March's... Um, graphics and things so we'll we'll be able to show you that we'll be able to talk about those okay okay quick with my crochet um i'm working on the huga blanket using our dk leftovers and minis and i did a different i picked another four skeins four skeins is the wrong term but anyway and these were the four colors four colors so when I pick four colors and I do eight squares from that batch, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. So I have, this is my third grouping. Um, so. Okay. So evidently, so the blue is chaos. Excuse me. The red is uh, poison apples. The purple, I'm pretty sure is. Um, no, the red is um, the fall because this is tweed. But wasn't that poison apples? No, poison apples. No, I mean, but didn't it turn in? Didn't we change it? No, it it, it wasn't poison apples. It's a little bit different. Oh, poison okay. apples is a little bit different. Okay, well, this was the red from our Halloween, one of our Halloween collections. The purple, I'm pretty sure, is purple upholstery. Upholstery, gold. Um, is sure. it rumple? No, it's not variegated enough for rumple. It's like what? It's a tonal. I don't remember doing a tonal gold. Yeah, I have. No, I do. Hmm. So these are the the different variations of the four. They're gorgeous. Aren't they? These colors work beautifully together. And I really love this this particular like granny square. It's fun to crochet crochet it up quickly in the DK. Are you doing is it all the same granny square? Yes. Okay. Yep. So So you're going to be doing so I need 81, I think, of these. So you're doing two of each color? Like two with the blue outside, two with the purple outside? I do um, them in one order. So like if it's purple, red, blue, gold, then it'll be so the purple in the center. And then move the purple out to the next round and the blue okay. and into the center that kind of thing so I do that and then I mix up for four and then I mix up the order of the colors and do another four okay so that I have eight um so that's this and then I, I'm ready to pick another color grouping and I used up all the yarn on all four of them excellent so that was exciting yeah that's very good nothing went back in the bag cool um so I have that, have these. These with the red, the orange, the lighter purple, and the green. And then this one, this grouping. So it's gonna be a, a real mishmash of colors. But fun. Yeah. And then I'm going to use, um, we have some neutrals, um, leftovers. I think it, I'm hoping we're going to have enough of the Dormouse. And if not, we have the Dormouse and New Jersey Beaches, which are close enough together. They will be the main color that pulls it all together. Cool. But right now I need 81 and i am got 24. Well, you're a, more than a third of the way through. A yeah. quarter, more okay. than a quarter of the way through. And it's um, great in the morning with my tea. Right. I work on them while I listen to my book, and it's really a very nice way to spend the morning. Yes, it is. It really is. Okay. All right. Um, my project, what I'm doing. Um, hold 
Helen got me the Lego bugs, which are just, I mean, really cool. so cool. So, so cool. So I finished the Morpho butterfly, the blue Morpho butterfly. His wings move. There's a bee in the flowers. This is just so cool. It really is. I love these. So Sunday morning, I spent a lovely day, a lovely morning putting him together. I am working on the beetle, the um, Hercules beetle. He is up next. And I have the center part of his body done. So okay. I am working on that right now. But it's just really, really cool. So that's that's the thing that I am working on. Okay, so last week I said that I was putting my... 24 birds shawl into timeout while I figured it out. I gave it timeout so I could figure it out. And in the meantime, I worked on my Pearl Strings sweater using his hidden entrance from the Secret Garden. I just want to show. God, it's gorgeous. How far along I am. That is spectacular. It really is. It's a really cool looking sweater. Um, Does the the pearl beads line go all the way down? What do you mean? So you have the pearl and then stockinette and then that's the pearl a, row and then stockinette. That that's the body of the sweater yeah. all the way down. Okay, so if you figure out I need like eight of these sections, then you can count it off and be like, oh, I'm down right. to my last two. Yeah, I figure. Um, I have to finish up. The, I'm going to finish up the section I'm on now. Do another section, and then I'll start to see where I am. Okay. As far as length is concerned. Right. Um, but I just love the look of the sweater, and it works great with the speckled yarn. It does, because you can see the textures, and the yarn gets to shine. So, really quite pleased. It's really beautiful, and it's a very very easy pattern. So what is the pattern again? It's pearl strings. Okay. Um, I forget the designer, but I will link it down below. All right. Are and you... that's using hidden entrance. Okay. Are you going to talk about your shawl? Yes, I am. Okay. So the shawl went out into timeout for a couple days. I pulled it back out. I figured out stitch markers. And I went back to it, and everything is fine. We're back, we're friends again. Um, it's hard to show, because I was gonna try and take a picture of it to put it up on Instagram. But it, it being, looks like an absolutely beautiful jellyfish. <laughs> it does. <laughs> or like a giant tam. Yeah. Um, but, so it being a circular shawl, it's kind of hard to stretch it out so you can see so what you can really see is how gorgeous the colors are and how gorgeous the colors are together yes so i started off with rambling roses and i went into weeping willow and now i am in with um this is uh whims of wisteria the green and the purple together are just so pretty. Are perfect. They really are. And then the pink down here. So I'm very glad that I stuck with it um, because now everything's working out and it's fine. And then, so color, my D color is going to be the uh, Midwinter's Night. So that'll be the, the darker part darker pop at the end okay beautiful it is and i'm about nine rows maybe not even maybe i'm under 10 rows for clue two so i should be done that in the next uh, day or two okay so i am still on track yeah clue three comes out on thursday. thursday so even with putting it in timeout you're still on track yes that is yeah that is impressive yeah that's very impressive so uh, still at 288 stitches, my guess is clue three is going to jump us to uh, 
500. Okay. 600, whatever. She does the normal yarn, you know, knit one yarn over. Right. Increase. But it's really, the patterns are pretty. Um, I'm not sure you can really see. Maybe get it a little bit closer. Okay, you're starting to see the lace. Yeah. Look at that. Look at the purple and green together. Oh my it's god. So pretty. And then I love the blending of it all. Yeah. So um, right. yeah. Gorgeous. It will be a surprise to all of us what it looks like when it's completed <laughs> because it's just, you know, a giant hat right now. But I am enjoying knitting it again. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. All right. Ha. Ah, March books. Let's talk March books. Where's my book? Got my book. Yes. This one? Mm -hmm. Or the one underneath? Nope, that one. This one. Okay. All right. In my reading journal. Okay, so I read a total of nine books in March. Three of them were physical books, five of them were audible books, one was an ebook. I read 1,512 pages and I listened to 70 hours of audiobooks. I did not do my hours. My audiobooks are, I listen at 1.7 speed, so. It gets cut down to about 40 hours of yeah, audio. Yeah, I do 1.4. 1 1.7 1 is just a little too too fast for me. Uh, but I did three physical books, three kit audio books, zero ebooks, And my total pages were 2,525 pages. Do you do an average rating? For the, my month? Yeah. I do not, but it was not a great month. My audibles were great. My physical books were bleh. Okay. Uh, my uh, average I rating was 4.22, which is pretty good. One four on my physicals, a two, and a one. Okay. Um, so, and then my audibles were fours and one five. I had my first five star read. No. My first five star fiction read. Really? You gave it five? I'm just listening to that now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We are both well and truly consumed by the throne of glass series oh my god that's what we're doing on audible um, i had to listen to another book because helen was listening to book four too slowly because she only does I had it at 1.4 <laughs> i had caught up to her and i had to give myself something in between so i listened to the latest of um well the next in the series of uh the saint mary's chronicles by jody taylor which I adore anyway, so um, it was not a hardship. But oh my gosh, I am just yeah. You know, that's why I listen to so many hours worth of books. Also, Ivy, I'm up, right. I'm usually the one taking her out in the morning, so I put my book in while we're out at six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning. But oh, these books are just they're very very good. They're taking they, over. They are. Um, they're fantasy books. They're not the romanticy no. um, that her later series have. Um, there is some subplots of romance, right? But it is mainly the world, the wars, and very, very strong women. Yes, I mean, I would be very happy to have my daughter niece nephew what niece whatever read these books because these are very strong women who get things done yes they do they're so good uh, and the queen of shadows is the one that i just finished and there is a uh, a part where i mean i almost stood up and cheered <laughs> at one point i can't wait to uh, <laughs> i just started it so i'm still <laughs> relatively new into it um okay very, very good so I read, I did have one five-star read this month. It was not the, the uh, Kate or the Sarah J. Mosses are coming in at like 4.75 for me. 
um, except the air of fire. That one I gave four because um, that was kind of like New Moon with the Twilight series where she was just, you know, too into her sadness and that kind of thing. And it was um, putting putting things in place for the next step. Right. To, However, there, there, there was a lot of place setting. Once you got past the oh, woe is me part of it, then she started kicking ass again. And yeah. then it was good. Then it was good, which is what kept it at a four. But I read The Secret Keeper by Kate Morton. I adore Kate Morton. I think she is just one of those people that takes words and puts them together in such beautiful fashion that I love reading her books. Um, I really enjoy her characters, even if I don't particularly like the characters that much. Although these... Um, there was one that I didn't like. Other than that, everybody else was really good. Um, and uh, there were some twists and turns in it. I figured out the twists and turns, but it, it was very satisfying anyway. It is a story about, um, it starts in World War II and it's going on during World War II and then it goes to the next generation in 2011 when the woman who was a young woman in uh, World War II is now 90 and on her deathbed. Um, and it talks about her children and it's just so good. So very, very, very good. Um, I, I just, I liked it so much. So I recommend that one very strongly. Um, and then other than that, that I read four of the Sarah J. Mosses and a couple of other things at the beginning of the month <laughs> or just <laughs> whatever whatever um because once i started doing the throne of glass it's just that's all that i'm thinking about now um my one good physical book that i read was reckless girls by rachel hawkins it's a thriller um i gave it four stars because generally i need at least one character that i like for me to enjoy a book right I hated every single character in this book. They were just terrible people. Um, and yet I was, it was page turnery for yeah. me. Um, so good thriller. Uh, and I had read another one by her earlier in the year, The Villa, um, which I had also given four stars to and also not particularly likable characters, but she writes a good thriller. She so, does. Um, and it's, yeah. And it's a different, it's not like, you know, the whodunit kind of thrillers, it's just, you know, it's more like, oh, it's different. Right. They're very different. So um, I enjoyed that. And then I had two total duds. So Okay. And then my audibles were all Sarah J. Moss. Right. I did do another um, Jodie Taylor, A Second Chance. That's book three in the St. Mary's um, Chronicles. And then I did um, the fourth one. But that ended, I finished it yesterday, so it counts as April, not March, even though most of it was done in March. Um, so what was your favorite book of the month? Oh, the, my the favorite? Secret Keeper. No, I, I put, I, I actually chose Throne of Glass. Oh, okay. Because even though The Secret Keeper got the five stars, The Throne of Glass is the one that I am still completely engrossed in. Okay. You know, so it was... The introduction to the Throne of Glass series, because I could have given it to um, the Assassin's Blade or Crown of Midnight, but um, I went with the first one so that I could just, you know, this is the one that started me off. So that is my favorite book of the month. Okay. What was yours? Queen of Shadows. Okay. Um, so I am on the Empire of Storms. The fifth. Which is the fifth, so... Okay. Is it the fifth? Or the fourth? I think so. No, it's the fifth. Well, uh, the Assassin's Blade they do is like 1.5. Right, but the Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Era of Fire is three. I'm listening so to... So Queen of Shadows is the fourth, fourth. in the series. So on you're the on the fifth. Yeah. I'm on the fourth. I'm going to run out soon and it's going to be... Well, then we can go over to A Court of Thorn and Roses. Yeah. And follow that through or go on to something else and give ourselves a break type of thing. 
Um, well, the reason I started this whole quest was to get to A Court of Thorn and Roses because I have done the first two of Crescent City and the second one ends um, with an ending that would make much more sense to me if I had read The Court of Thorn and Roses. Like, I would have been like, oh, what the hell's going on? Like, everybody right. else in the world. Um, <laughs> oh, my God, I can't believe she did that. Right. Um, so, before we read the third in the Crescent City. Before we read the third in the Crescent City, I've got to do a court of Thorn and Roses so I know what's going on. We, this may be the year of Sarah, Sarah J. Moss. Moss. Yeah. Um, this is my year of, so far, it's like really very, see, green is my fantasy color. Okay. Um, you should show that. So I, uh, as I finish books, I color it in with the color of it for the genre. Um, so you can see that I'm doing a lot of fantasy. And I'm, I have not in the past been a huge fantasy person. But I'm, I'm really, I'm getting into it now. This is mine. And you can see the blue is my fantasy. Because <laughs> it's just peppered all over the place. People but you have, have you have been fantasy because you've done, oh, yeah. I mean, since The Lord of the Rings, you've... I've always loved um, fantasy. And I've just, for whatever reason, shied away from it. Um, probably because as a, I'm, I'm a lazy reader. In my brain, if I see a big chunker of a book, I, go, mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to read that. Um, and then once I get myself to read it, then I read it. But it's just my initial thought process is, oh, really, I don't want to read that. This is my book bracket of the year. Started putting in my books for each of the months. And then I will break it down by quarter. However, it is not in order. I did it randomly. So when I say break it down by quarter, I will take three of them and put them uh, into one. I have to pick one out of the three. Helen did it that she's only pairing up two against each other. Yeah, so. See, I have January, May, and October together, and May and October better be pretty strong because the 10,000 Doors of January is uh, a really hard book to beat. Yeah, that is. I have yet to have a book like that this year. Where it's like, that's it. Everything, I haven't, everything else better be good. Yeah, I haven't either. I mean, I The Secret Keeper is my other five-star read of the year. Um, that was non that was fiction, but um, it doesn't hold a candle to Ten Thousand Doors of January. Right. It's a great book, but it's it's not a, a January book. So, all right, that is where we are with our books. Yes, I hope you guys are having a good reading year so far too, and are enjoying some books. If you have uh, recommendations for us, please put them in the comments because we take note of them and. Um, then when we're looking for our next book straight, yeah, this all over the place. Yes. So. Uh, Barnes and Noble just sent me something that was, Hey, you might be interested in this book. And I was so interested in that book. I got that plus four others because that's how it works. We haven't bought books in a long time. We haven't, we've been really good. However, I did do book of the month too. So, um, in about a week, we're going to be getting lots of books. <laughs> We're going to get to unbox books for you guys. So we can well, we haven't done book of a month. We haven't picked a book of the month for... Three months. Three months. So you had a lot of credits on book of the month that was stored up. So, so yeah. Uh, okay. Also, doing the book vent, um, I had a lot of money saved from points for doing yeah. that. So I got six books, six physical books. And hardcovers. Uh, some soft cover, some hard cover for $8.91 from Barnes & Noble because I had my all my credits yeah. saved, which was very nice. Um, so, yeah, that was very, very fun. That, that was a nice way to spend part of the morning. <laughs> but when it comes, we'll do a, an unboxing for you and share them with you. So if there's things that you might be interested in, too, you might want to go buy them. Right. Or get them from your library. Okay. I think that is about it for us today. I think yes. that's just about it. Um, we hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Go forth and create. 
We will be back on Friday at noon with our live broadcast. All right, so stay dry. Stay warm. And we will see you on Friday. Bye. Bye.